my update video. Um, I kind of want to explain some stuff. Um, I've had a few appointments that I'm like, I didn't vlog, and what I did vlog is not enough to turn into a video. Um, and I'm trying to keep my videos from being, hey, we're going somewhere, hey, we're back, because I like, I tend to not like want to talk in public. And so I do all my talking at home in my room, and I feel like sit-down videos are not as entertaining and stuff. And But um, I kind of need to do a sit-down video, so that's what we're going to be doing today. But um, I want to go over um, a bunch of stuff. So um, the first thing I want to go over is that Dr. Matthews, which is one of my neurologists, he ordered a MRI. And we're having a lot of problems with getting the MRI sit to a place that we can afford to go to because we've had a bunch of, um, like I've had a bunch of ER visits and my dad got his appendix removed and so he was in the ER for a while in like the hospital and stuff. And so we're in a lot more medical debt than we normally are. And so we can't just like go to like Touchstone and get an MRI because we can't afford it. We need to go to a place that my Medicaid can cover it because I have my mom's insurance or like my parents' insurance actually because they're together. Um, and then I have Medicaid secondary, which will normally cover everything that the medic, I mean, that the um, other insurance won't. Um, and then when I'm 26, I won't have that insurance anymore. So we're desperately trying to get all my diagnoses before I'm 26. Um, there's a possibility that I might always be in medical limbo. A lot of people, um, uh, I guess as sick as me or even sicker deal with that they're constantly finding out more stuff about their body because every time I go to another doctor they want to test me for something new um, because of some information that I've gotten recently you know how I was going to the heartbeat clinic I'm still going but because of all those appointments that we did we got a lot of answers and the if you want to know what the answers are I'm not going to say them in the video but you can go to like my Instagram and I think some stuff on my Patreon is public but um, I always post stuff first on Patreon, and then later on I will post on Instagram. So if y'all want to like be more like, um, you want if you want to follow my journey closer, then those two places are the best place to do that. And while I'm at it, I want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart from the Patreons that I do have. Y'all are the reason why I'm able to keep up with YouTube because YouTube costs money. Um, I didn't realize that when I first started making videos. But yeah, y'all are the reason why I'm still able to like do this because I love doing this. I love making videos. <laughs> and yeah, I really appreciate y'all. So if you haven't checked out my Patreon, maybe go check it out. There are some tiers that you can look at and see if any of that stuff interests you. But let's get into the video. So um, doc as I was saying, I'm kind of all over the place, but Dr. Matthews, wanted to do a um, MRI and we're having a problem getting that MRI we've sent it to one place that said they did they took Medicaid but then they found out that they didn't take Medicaid and then after we got it sent to somebody else that said they took Medicaid too they didn't take Medicaid actually it's this big ordeal um, but now we're trying to get like if the doctor will send in a form stating why I need the MRI um, then they'll cover it but the lady at the front desk is like we don't cut we don't take Medicaid we don't take Medicaid we don't take Medicaid and I'm like we fucking get that we understand that you don't take Medicaid but if you send in this to the doctor Medicaid might pay for it even though you don't take Medicaid like they'll either I don't know how it would work but they either give us the money to pay for it or something it, it it's a thing like Medicaid will, will cover certain things if it's medically necessary if the doctor sends in a reason of why and we can't get the lady at the front to do that because I'm sorry but she's kind of an idiot she doesn't want to she's so like we don't take Medicaid we don't take Medicaid that she's not listening to what we're asking we're not asking her to take Medicaid we're trying to get I can't think of the word but the reasoning there's a there's a medical name for it but the reasoning behind why I need the MRI if it gets sent to Medicaid Medicaid will agree to pay for it in a way that is allowed. I don't know how that works, but it does. I'm getting out of breath. I'm sorry. I have notes on my phone because it's a... I have a lot to go over. The reason we want to do an MRI is because of my speech issues. If you've just now stumbled on this video or if you've been on my channel for a while, I put title uh, subtitles up for when I fuck up my talking. Because um, I could say like 
a wrong person's name or um, just something totally a t totally wrong word that doesn't make the make the sen that makes the sentence mean something else or you know things I need to work on. Um, if it's really bad, I'll voice over, which I have done a few voiceovers, but that takes a little bit more time. So normally I try to type. The problem is, is that that makes it not accessible for a lot of people, and I want my videos to be accessible. Um, and I wish I could like subtitle them better, but with my typing issues, I make the subtitles even worse. If you can hear my refrigerator, I apologize. I have a refrigerator in my room right now. But, um, yeah, so I also have like, um, um, hypersensitive reflexes. So, you know when they hit your knee and it flies up? Mine flies up way more and, um, than it's supposed to and it reacts like, like hypersensitive, you know, it reacts too much. And so we're trying to figure out what's causing that. And then I also have like, um, I'm sorry. I also have like um, symptoms where like I can't feel very well. Like my feet, they don't feel very well if they do that little vibrating thing. It's this, if you go to the doctor, you might understand it. But they like move this thing and it like, it's metal and it vibrates and they put it on your skin and you're supposed to tell them when it stops vibrating. Apparently when I can't feel it anymore, it's still vibrating and that's like a problem. Um, so we're trying to figure out why. I'm really out of breath, I'm sorry. <laughs> we're trying to figure out why that's happening. And, um, so we need an MRI. But the problem is with, you know, trying to get Medicaid to cover it. And we're trying to work with people that are too busy at, too busy at being, like, closed-minded, I guess, to listen to what we need. And so we're working on that. And we got to hurry up because this month the MRI, um, prescription, um, my brain is lovely right now. Uh, it goes bye-bye. I'm gonna talk like a child. It goes bye-bye. Um, so that leaves us with Dr. O. Dr. Um, and it, it ties into the MRI, and I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But Dr. O is my Tourette's doctor. He's the one that diagnosed it. Um, he's my main, main neurologist, kind of, I guess. But, um, I can't see him very often, and so I guess he's not really my main neurologist. But, he's my main neurologist in the sense that he takes Medicaid. And so we could afford him. Um, Dr. Matthews does not take Medicaid and it's becoming a problem. So we try to get Dr. O, which is not his full name, but I can't say his name, to um, like order an MRI to um, see what's up. But he's saying that I had an MRI two years ago and the likelihood of it changing from then is really low. So he doesn't see a need to order an MRI. Dr. Matthews disagrees with that though. Thankfully, because I, I would like to have an MRI and see if there's changes with my like brain because my Tourette syndrome has actually gotten worse. I have tics where I'm slapping myself in the face, which makes my migraines like so much worse. And I'm having a lot more tic attacks. <laughs> um, when I'm in public, I'm my tics are super super bad um, to the point where it's really hard for me to hold my camera. Like I don't want to throw my camera. I have so many like cracks on my phone because of throwing it and I have to have this little thing on it to try to keep it from like being thrown. I need to get one of the ones that makes it tight on your wrist because those are like, like this can still slip off my arm you know. Um, and so I need a new one. But um, yeah, I'm very scared about breaking my camera. What was I saying? It's like really hot because of the fans off for a video and so my brain fog is awful. So, um, about the Tourette's. We were trying to take medication for it. I have the medication over here somewhere. Ah, this one? I don't want to... I'm going to spell it for you. It's Z-I-P-R-A-S-I-D-O-N-E. I'm supposed to take it once a day. Um, and it's for the Tourette's syndrome. It's a psychotic, like an antipsychotic, um, which is the main thing for Tourette's. Um, I, like, I think that's actually the only thing for Tourette's Syndrome. It's not a mental illness though. Don't get it confused with that. It's just they have found that it, it can also be useful for people with Tourette's along with other mental illnesses. But anyway, because I throw it up and I can't keep it down, they're thinking, well, they're, they're, I can't talk, I'm sorry. They're telling me that I can do a shot once a month for my Tourette's to see if it'll help. And so I'm kind of weighing the pros and cons of that because when you're sick, a lot of being sick is weighing, you know, the pros and cons, like, um, how do I put it? 
some um, the fray the fray life put it well really well. I'm trying to remember how they said it. I think it's your your it's the risk versus benefit. You know, there's always some cons to medication you're on, um, and you're trying to weigh is the risk of not taking this or not doing this um, better than the benefit. I guess so. Like, let's say if you need heart surgery, if you don't get heart surgery, the risk of um, not doing it is a lot worse. I don't. I can't talk. I'm getting very frustrated with not being able to talk as well as I would like because brain fog is very much um, making my sentences not as put together as well as they could be, and it aggravates me because when I was younger, I like I care very much about words and specific words. Um, I care a lot about definitions, like it's an autism thing. I want my sentences to um, reflect who I am as a person, I guess, and they don't. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. I'm trying to figure out how to put it. Um, editing this video is going to be fun. <laughs> it's been 13 minutes! Oh my gosh! I don't even feel like I've been talking that long. But, um, so yeah, like with heart surgery, you're, weigh you're weighing if you don't do it, you're probably going to fucking die, you know? Um, so the risk of the surgery is worth it for the benefit of being able to live longer, okay? So if I take this shot, is the risk of the side effects... Why? Oh, right, sorry about that. It was a washing machine. So, but basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to see if the risk of the medication is worth the benefit of possibly taking less and when we say taking less we mean like maybe 50% less ticks there's no medication that will fully make ticks go bye bye and I'm really out of breath but yeah I'm trying to figure out what I think um, I might not know until I try it so I might have to try it and see if it is worth the benefit and sometimes a lot of that medication is that it's like trial and error and um, so we're gonna I don't know if I'm gonna try it yet but I might and if I do I have to give the shot myself which I already have to start giving me myself B12 shots, which I haven't done yet. Um, I have the smaller needles now. They gave me like these huge ass needles um, compared to the smaller needles. Um, and so I think I might be able to do it. Like I used to give myself metrotrex... I can't talk. I used to give myself my methotrexate shots when I was a child. So if I was a child giving myself shots, I should be able to do it as an adult. But I don't know. <laughs> I'm very nervous because with my Tourette's like I just don't want to stab myself on accident like it's it's a, it's a different thing than doing it on purpose because that's kind of what shots are it's like stabbing yourself but um yeah it's like I know I can do it it's like getting over the mental hurdle of doing it um there are people out all over the world that get themselves shots because they have like diabetes I'm sure I can do it I just got to get over the mental hurdle of doing it and I'm gonna bring y'all along when I do that the first time so we'll look for look for that, um, but I'm really sorry I'm out of breath. But yeah, I have some plans for like um, I'm making a video for pain management. I have a bunch of stuff planned, other than just like doctor's visits because I'm gonna be showing y'all doctor's visits that I've been going to um, with Dr. Solomon, which is my heartbeat doctor person cardiologist. Um, I have a lot of those appointments that I need to like make into vlogs. But I was working on my computer and I deleted a bunch of videos, like clips of videos. And so I'm missing a bunch of stuff and I'm trying to figure out how to put them together and not make them so boring. Because, um, like, you know how you have, like, a story or a video needs a middle, it needs a beginning, middle, and end. And I think I struggle with the middle of my videos a lot. I'm trying to make them more entertaining. <laughs> And so, um, I'm working on that, and so you're seeing, like, videos that are, like, really pretty old. Like, a lot of these videos are from last year. Um, and I don't know how many, many, I don't know how many more I have. But, um, yeah, so follow my other social media accounts if you want an up-to-date thing. Because I only post once a week, and I think I'm not even posting that often right now because of how much I'm in I'm pain. Um, a lot of the time I'm sleeping and I'm not able to edit or make a video to finish the videos off or whatever.
and so um thank you for being um understanding with that i wish i could post more often like if i could i would post every day i love making videos but you know uh i do i'm doing what i can so i i am thankful for everybody that watches my videos i really appreciate y'all Ooh, I'm out of breath. But the next thing that we need to go over, which was supposed to be a vlog but it wasn't, is that I went to an allergist because I was diagnosed with EDS and stuff. Um, I needed to look into mast cell activation syndrome because since I've, since I've been a child, I've had problems with like people's perfumes. Uh, like my mom can't wear perfume because it makes me have symptoms to it. Um, I'm allergic to band-aids now, um, which is another thing like, um, mast cell normally is like, um, it's not as bad when it first starts and then it starts to get bad as you get older and that's kind of what we're seeing. Um, like, I have to wear a nausea patch now because I can't, we're trying to find a way to keep medication down and you know with me being in the emergency room, I needed to take that, um, I'm still on an antibiotic for that. This is my second round of antibiotics because I'm not getting any better because I'm, throwing up the majority of the antibiotic you know you, you you don't keep the antibiotic down it's not going to do its job and so we're working on trying to keep me not throwing up all the time and so um i'm on two different um oral nausea medications and i'm wearing a patch for people that are taking chemotherapy which is on my butt right now so i can't show you but well i guess i could but I'll sh yeah, I had it on my arm, which is where they first started to tell me to put it, and it kept falling off, and it's like on my hip butt area, and my diaper kind of keeps it in place, so it's working, but I'm having to put like a another thing on top of it to keep it on, because for some reason it doesn't want to stay on, and um, I'm editing this video right now, but the point of me telling you that was because like, I'm, it, the patch makes me itch. And we've tried several different other patches to put on top of it, but the, a lot of them I'm allergic to. And so, like, I'm allergic to, like, rubbing alcohol now, a um, bunch of random things. Like, if my mom sprays cleaners, I my lungs start to hurt, my eyes hurt, and maybe itch. Um, and so, um, cigarette smoke really, really fucking bothers me. I actually used to like the way cigarettes smelled. I didn't, like... I wasn't a smoker, but for some reason I was strange and I liked the way they smelled, but now it's just like extreme amount of like pain. And so we're going to look into that and so in about two weeks I will know if I have it or not. But what's the other thing I needed to go over? Yes, the allergy stuff. So we went to the allergist and we did some kind of test that I blew into, I've done a lot of breath tests recently. And um, it came back good, which was great, like I don't ever get very many good um, results recent at least recently since i've been seeing dr solomon because <clears throat> he's been doing the tests that i've been needing done forever so yeah i'm getting tested for mast cell by an allergist and i will um hopefully i'm gonna be able to vlog the appointment in two weeks i'm definitely gonna vlog getting blood done because my last time getting blood went horrible it went fucking horrible and I, I haven't talked to my mom about it yet, but like when I'm trying to get my blood done and I'm nervous, I start taking a lot more. And again, Tourette's is not a mental illness, but it is stress and anxiety will bring out more ticks. And so um, I'm getting, so when I'm getting, before I get, I can't talk, but before I get blood, I'm always taking a lot. And a lot of the times I'll have my mom hold my arm down just in case that before I can tell them like they were understanding I don't think they were understanding why they're holding my arm down they understand to an extent that if I start taking she needs to keep my arm straight but that's not what I want her to really do I need to explain next time I get blood to both my mom and the technician that hey the reason you're holding my arm down is so if I need to tell you to get the needle out of my arm like that that why you're doing that you can hold my arm down because I have tics that are semi-involuntary that I can like hey you need to stop doing the pokiness and remove it so I can tick because I'm about to tick and I'm fighting it right now but there are other tics that I can't do that like I don't even know if I can warn you a lot of the times I can't because I'm surprised by them just as much as the other person is especially with how loud they can be 
or how powerful they can be. I'm really out of breath. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I feel like I'm in a good mood right now. Um, fuck. <laughs> I need I need them to like listen. And I was trying to tell them like you need to stop. You need to stop. Like she was about to put the needle in my arm. Like you need to stop. You need to let go. And I had to like kind of raise my voice a little bit to get them to let go. That does not need to happen. If I say let go, pull the needle out of my arm, whatever, there needs to be like a, a, a word that says like you need to get the fuck out like right now. Because um, like if there's a needle in my arm and my arm goes like this, the needle is just going to go deep into my arm and I don't, I don't want to think of the pain, I don't want to think of the pain, I don't, I don't, I don't. Ouch. And I really want to prevent that. I'm terrified of that because I have a friend that has Tourette's and he just got his hair cut and literally went like Zzz! and I'm that nope mm -mm, nope I, I want to get to the middle I want to get tattoos and I'm afraid to do that because <laughs> like what if I tick and then the the like needle goes like this and I have some like weird red line or black line on my arm like uh, I would cry I would really cry if that happens because I wouldn't be able to fix it I don't have money for that like the next time I get blood I'm gonna have to talk to them about how we're gonna do it and we're gonna have to set up a word that says if I say this you get the fuck out like you pull the needle out of my arm it doesn't matter if i'm if i'm bleeding that doesn't matter i would rather bleed everywhere and we deal with that in a little bit than me have the needle shoved all the way down in my arm because that would fucking hurt yeah i guess this was a boring update video for you i don't think i have anything else to go over um oh my hair my hair is always up in a bun because i never brush it i'm with my costochondritis and the other thing that we found out which i feel like i'm like this video is just giving him is kind of like gonna make that video not mean as much because that that day I got diagnosed with a really I was really excited um, but I have some stuff associated with my stomach and my chest which one of them we already know which is costochondritis I'm not gonna say the other thing if you want to know go look at my social media but um, I forgot what I was the point was oh it like brushing my hair hurts because the more I move up top my top body parts I guess the more I'm in pain and it's also making it really hard to dye my hair which you can tell I'm hoping that I can dye my hair eventually but whenever I do I'm gonna have videos with half dyed hair and half not dyed hair so you'll you know why that happens sorry again I was talking and didn't finish my point because brain fog but um, I've been like keeping my hair braided and to try to keep it from getting as like rat's nest as it is because I can go several months without brushing my hair and it'll just like be this huge ass knot there's pictures on my social media and I think I've even made a video about depression with my hair because that's part of it like part of it is depression but a lot of it is pain um, reasons mm -hmm. and my phone won't shut up but yeah so I'm trying to see if braiding it and keeping it braided will is gonna help and I also really need to dye it which I've said in the video but um, yeah, I still get like really tangled in the back, so I'm gonna still have to like, I, I'm always gonna have to brush my hair, but braiding it seems to keep it like more manageable, I guess. Um, but yeah, so um, I'm gonna let you go back to the video. But um, yeah, this video is gonna be really fun to edit, so I will talk to y'all later. Don't forget that I love you. Remember, you know your body better than anybody else, so please fucking listen to it. Please go to the doctor. Just do your best to get your answers because they're out there. I fought very hard and I'm still fighting very hard. And so, don't forget that I love you. Thank you for staying alive. I will see you next time. Bye.